Are you looking for a step-by-step -step guide to becoming an online business manager? Well, that's what we've got for you in today's video. My name is Abby Ashley. I'm the CEO and founder of The Virtual Savvy. I train individuals to work from home on their own terms, and I'm so excited that you are interested in online business management. It's an incredible option for the right type of person, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Now, if you like this type of content, you want to know all things work from home, you definitely want to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified every time I release new content. Now, you may be wondering, what is an online business manager? Is online business management right for me. And so let me take you a few steps back and tell you about my personal experience with online business management. I started in 2015 as a virtual assistant. It's how I was able to replace my income, replace my husband's income. And now I've trained hundreds of thousands of people to start their own virtual assistant businesses as well. Now, while I teach all things virtual assistants, my good friend, Sarah Noked, teaches all things online business management. And there is a difference between the two. So I thought it would be fun to have Sarah Noked, my good friend, come in and talk about those differences, talk about what it means to be an online business manager and how you can get started as one. Now, I never became an online business manager myself. I'm actually not the right personality to do so, which is one of the things Sarah is gonna talk about, but I do have experience hiring an online business manager. And if you are a virtual assistant or maybe somebody just looking to get into the online space and you are really systems oriented, team management oriented, you like leading teams or leading projects, you're definitely kind of that organized personality, but also someone who can take charge, this could be an absolute amazing option for you. In fact, so many of our students who start off as virtual assistants end up leveling their businesses to become online business managers. So again, I think this is an incredible path for the right person. Now, of course, I have to mention my good friend Sarah's website. It's obmschool.com and you can go to obmschool.com slash Abby for a special offer from the Virtual Savvy if you are looking to get into online business management. So let's go ahead and jump into this special session with Sarah Noked as she discusses all things online business management. Thank you, Abby, for having me today. I'm so excited to talk about all things online business management, whether this is your first time hearing about OBMs, have been thinking about becoming one, or even want to hire one, you're exactly where you need to be. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First and foremost, what in the world is an OBM and why would you want to become one? An online business manager works directly with small business owners and is responsible for managing the day-to-day -day activities. This is more or less the clear-cut definition of an OBM, but I want to dive a little bit deeper. I mean, what exactly do the day-to-day -day activities entail? So to give you an overview, this could be managing, creating, and implementing, SOPs or standard operating procedures, managing projects, managing the team, managing the launch. The list could go on and on, but let me note right off the bat, you don't have to be the jack of all trades. You can specialize, which we'll talk about more about in a bit. I like to really view the OBM as sitting between strategy and implementation, playing a very pivotal role in bridging the gap between the strategic vision and its practical execution. Positioned at this crucial intersection, OBM serve as the linchpin, ensuring that the strategic direction set forth by the business is effectively translated into actionable steps. And the big idea here is that it is the role of an OBM to offload or to take on some of the burden that their clients are experiencing. So by taking over the management of those ongoing activities and tasks, and the responsibilities and the accountability. In the end, we create space within that business so that it can scale and become more profitable. So diving a little deeper into this clientele aspect. So what do the OBM clients look like? OBMs will work with clients that fall into certain categories. OBMs usually work with smaller teams of max 10 people or less, consisting of usually the business owner, a virtual assistant, and other freelancers like a marketing team. Now, that being said, sometimes the client is just starting to grow their team. The other thing that I wanna mention about the client is that their growth annual revenue is usually between 
100,000 and just under 2 million. And that's another important point for you to be aware of when wanting to work with an OBM client, because the truth is, is that many OBMs, many online business managers charge between 60 to $70 or more US per hour. We charge this rate because we are vital to the growth, success, and profitability of the business. We are leaders, managers, we build systems, look at the big picture and serve as the business brainstorming buddy, keeper of the big picture vision and goals and being that soundboard for our clients. So an online business manager is really a viable investment for a small business that's making that right amount of revenue. Now, I just wanna expand on this idea of being a business brainstorming buddy a bit because truthfully, OBMs are really seen as a business partner more than anything else. You will be their go-to when they have a new idea to discuss. They will ask you for your ideas, input, and feedback. You are their trusted sidekick. They can trust you to keep that big picture in mind, be bold about sharing your opinions, and design and implement the systems that will help their vision come to life. So now, diverting back to what an OBM client looks like for just a little bit longer, I wanna be clear here because I wanna bust a common misconception that many up and coming OBMs have. You do not need to only have to work with online businesses. In my own experience, I have worked with many traditional offline businesses like real estate agents, doctors, lawyers, and I've also worked with a lot of online businesses like course creators, consultants, and coaches. I don't want you to limit yourself in fact, the OBM world is currently transforming into an entire industry. Brick and mortar and online businesses alike are discovering more and more what OBMs are and how vital we are to the growth and success of a business. To speak plainly, there are more than enough clients out there for OBMs right now. And I encourage you to jump aboard while things are full steam ahead. Now, I want to get a little bit more granular about the OBM role and what it looks like. So we know that we manage systems and projects and team, but what does that even mean? The first big thing that we tackle on our clients plate or in our clients' businesses is the implementation piece. So what does this look like? If a business is quite small, like let's say closer to the 100,000 gross revenue mark, they won't have systems documented, they might not be using a project management tool, they're doing a lot of manual work and need help automating tasks and implementing like a CRM, a customer relationship management tool. So what do you do to fix this? You need to really take a closer look at what the client is doing and start to build those systems, document them so that when other team members come on board, the transition is as close to seamless and efficient as possible. You will help them build out and organize their project management tool or help them set up their customer relationship management tool. As you do these things, you will ultimately be streamlining the business and saving your client, their team, and yourself boatloads of time so you and said client can focus on scaling. The next big thing here is strategizing with your clients. This falls back on you being that client's business buddy or partner. You will be in some form their sounding board when they want help strategizing for a launch, just for example. And I want you to remember that they really love your opinion and want you to share your ideas. Over time and as you gain more experience, you will be able to pull on that experience and show your client what has worked what hasn't worked in the past. Basically, you wanna help them think through new strategies and implement it so that it has the best shot at success. Now, this kind of ties into the next point I wanna make here. You are the safekeeper of the business's vision and goals. Your client needs to be clear on these things from the get-go, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but you need to be almost even clearer on the vision and goals of the business, even more so than the client. And it is no secret that our clients can start snowballing with new ideas, routes to take, etc. And it's your job to again, be bold with them and keep them on that straight and clear path. This is also important because you should be able to make decisions, give advice and make suggestions knowing fully what their goals are so that you can do a better job and write a tight ship when it comes to everyone being on the same page and moving in the right direction. And finally, let's talk a little bit about the soft skills. As an OBM, you need to remember with great power comes great responsibility. And that includes being, for lack of better terms, nice.
Things like mindset and communication skills cannot be overlooked here. You need to be able to step up and be a leader, stay positive and not start pointing fingers at people. You are a leader on the team, so without question, communication skills are non-negotiable. You are part of the company culture. You even set a big part of the company culture and you need to set a good example for the team. So to wrap up this part of today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about why you would want to become an OBM. A little bit earlier, we talked about how OBMs can charge 60 to $150 an hour for their services. And this, for many of our students at OBM school, has literally transformed their lives. You know, we have students that have replaced their high paying corporate salaries in under a year, have shifted from another service provider role and have even doubled or tripled their annual revenue. But the thing is, because you are charging more, you're also opening up the opportunity to create more ideal work-life balance. OBMs talk about how they are not only proud of their businesses, but because of this business, they can be kinder to themselves, be more present as a parent, and can take and pay for vacations without feeling bad about it. So when it's all said and done, you are creating a job that fits you and not the other way around. You are creating a profitable business, filling it with clients who value you and enjoy working with you and as a result you get to live your life the way you want to so the next thing we need to talk about then is how do you make this happen so I've personally trained hundreds of OBMs and the most important thing that you need to realize from the start is that you can do this by leveraging your current strengths and skill sets no two OBMs are the same our qualities may align like we might be organized and detail oriented that's what makes us so effective but our professional background global location, culture, past experience are all unique. Maybe you come from a coaching background, a project management background, or have been in corporate for like the last 20 years, or you've been in law or in tech. We have had police officers, we have had doctors, we have had lawyers find success as online business managers. If you are organized, goal-driven, detail-oriented, you love looking at the bigger picture in business and are a good communicator, have a positive mindset, you can do this. This is often overlooked, but it is so important to own your unique strengths and be confident about them because your clients will see this too. And you know, something as simple as being interested in travel or being a physics major in school can help you find ideal clients that you can really identify with. And that's another true story, by the way. Embracing your unique interests and backgrounds will help you find success that's aligned with you, which is a huge, contributing factor to your long-term success. Now, I don't want to toot our own horn too much, but just throwing this out there as a potential route, you might want to consider to fine tune your OBM skill set, gain some experience, get a website set up, start building your own network of OBMs so that you feel supported, get some practice and access some very nice templates for proven SOPs and systems, and even start putting yourself out there in front of your ideal clients with some amazing frameworks around sales. OBM School has played a pivotal role in guiding hundreds of individuals from all walks of life towards becoming successful OBMs. Our courses, both the OBM Accelerator and our next level OBM accreditation have helped our students walk away from their nine to fives, increase their revenue as online service providers, and more or less find joy in their work again and transform their lives. And this pertains directly to our next big OBM success tip, build your community. Going down this route can be lonely, the entrepreneurial route, and frustrating all at once. It's not only beneficial emotionally to surround yourself with like-minded people, but it is so helpful to have your own sounding boards. Others you can gain insight and get feedback from and even work on filling up your client roster because let me tell you right now, referrals are key here. Once you get a few qualified clients that align with you and recognize you for the value you bring to the table, they will refer you to all their business friends that may need your help also. And some of these referrals can come from your network of OBMs that may have too many clients at this time or may have connected with a client they know would align with you and it goes on and on. The next thing you'll need to do is create a game plan that will help you land that first 
stepping stone client. As you are building your community and possibly investing in yourself to develop your skills on a more advanced level, you will need to get organized. I mean, this is what an OBM, being an OBM is all about, right? You need to set time to actually develop your business if you wanna actually have it all come together. Setting clear, attainable, and reasonable goals will help you get to where you want to be. I never said it was easy. Any transition in life, building a business, making this work are going to really take discipline consistency and dedication. But if you are setting goals for yourself and developing a system to stick to them, you will get there and land that first stepping stone client before you know it. Some examples of goals you might be setting are getting a website put together, putting together a basic system so that your business doesn't become a chaotic mess once you start getting clients, build your own OBM network, develop your skill set, etc. And again, I am not here to create a facade. This is completely possible, but it is hard, especially if you want to do it on your own like I did ages ago. So if you don't want to do it alone and you're interested in checking out our OBM blueprints and learning more about our community, I've created some beautiful resource just for you guys over at obmschool.com forward slash Abby. Now I know that this is a lot of information. So if you have any questions, just pop them below and either Abby or I will get back to you personally. I hope that I inspired you a little bit today to learn more about the OBM path and explore the possibility of it being your next professional step or just your next step in life. I want to thank you again, Abby, for having me today. Until next time. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments something that you learned, something that you didn't know about being an online business manager that you now know. I would love to hear from you in the comments. And again, if you want access to all of Sarah's genius, you have to go check out obmschool.com and you can go to obmschool.com slash Abby for a special virtual savvy offer. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope that you have a great week and we'll see you next time.